I am a VR person through and through. Well, not like this. Bruh. The day Google released the Google Cardboard, you bet I shoved my phone in that stupid little box and I had a grand old time. After that, I had the original Oculus Rift. That's the thing that truly opened my mind to what an immersive gaming experience can be. Wow. The motion controls and the 3D environments that you could be in, it was just such a massive jump ahead in technology compared to anything else at the time. The closest I had ever got to any other immersive gaming experience before this was probably the 3DS, which is just about as immersive as, you know, staring at a three inch screen, I guess. What, do you expect a joke here or something? Huh? What do you think, I'm some funny internet man or something, huh? I'll show you a funny internet man. Oh wait, no I can't. Look at this guy right here. Everybody knows this guy. He made this thing right here. The meta quest. Oh, oh, oh. What? Why did you do that? Take it back. Take what back? Call it by its name, damn it. Call it by what? The Oculus Quest 2. What? We do not say meta in this household. Rip Oculus. After their acquisition in 2014, which was nine years ago, by the way, <laughs> Oculus was slowly absorbed into Facebook, which then became Meta. Which is why this is here. I hate this so much. Some of the earlier models do still say Oculus on them, and you bet your ass I'm jealous of the people that got that one. See, I used to have a first generation Vive after wanting a bit more out of my Oculus Rift, and that Vive is where I enjoyed and discovered a lot of my favorite VR games like Beat Saber, Gorn, Robo Recall, Davi Go, Diner Duo, and of course, Half-Life Alex. But if I had such good experiences with the Vive, why would I trade it for the Zuck Box? Wasn't by choice. Between now and then, a lot of life has happened. I've just needed to downsize here and there. Even now, I don't, like, really have the proper room to do room scale VR. And with that in mind, that is where this starts making a bit more sense. I don't have to be tethered to my PC with this thing. I, I can take it wherever I want. And I know what you guys are thinking, so I'm just gonna come out and say it. Yeah, it works at Quiznos. It's not the perfect solution because yes, you are compromising on visual quality since it's basically like an Android phone inside of the headset doing all the work. But God damn it, dude, it's a lot better than playing no VR at all, I'll say that. The tracking also not the best, but I'm also a bit spoiled coming from the Vive, which had these dedicated base stations for tracking. But again, for what this is, the inside out tracking method that it uses is not too bad. Does this right here look like a guy who's getting bogged down, nitpicking about tracking stations and stuff to you? No, this guy's having a great time. What I'm trying to say here is the Quest 2, despite that, is pretty awesome, and it's the perfect headset for my needs. But if you know a thing about me and my studio here, you'd know that I'm built different, and a VR headset needs to do a lot more than just play VR games to impress me. Add time. What does PCBWay have anyway? PCBWay offers services that bridge the gap between your dreams and reality. And since that statement is entirely meaningless, let me give you an example. Say you see an awesome 3D model online that you want to 3D print, but you don't have a 3D printer. Now you do. Trying to solder together something that you need for a project, but you have no idea what you're doing and you screw up the entire thing? PCBWay has you covered. Can't come up with any good ideas yourself, but you still want to mod something? PCBWay has an entire library of community-made projects that you can browse and order the parts for instantly. They'll even assemble the whole board for you at their factory. This ad is like the opposite of an information hazard. This is an information blessing. You know what else I'm gonna bless you with? An offer from PCBWay for $5 off your first order for all new users. So go ahead and check out the link in the description and check PCBWay out. They've got a bunch of super cool stuff. Take a look. So, the Quest 2, being Android-based, can run your typical Android phone and tablet games. You have to sideload everything as APK files. It's actually pretty easy, you use this app called SideQuest. I'm not gonna get into it in this video, but I am gonna link a video in the description of someone who does a better job of explaining it than I would, so go check that out if you wanna install it yourself. Keep in mind though that there are no Google Play services here, and some games just straight up will not work without it. And I did try to look this up myself, and in my search I came across this video. The MOS Pro is an Android virtual machine app that allows users to run a separate Android operating system within their current Android device. 
And I guess this is an app that will run Google Play services in a virtual machine. And not only would this solution probably run horrible, but then the guy in the video goes on to say, VMOS.com. Yep, it's the one with the funny Chinese characters. So I did not do that. <laughs> But I did download some old school Android games that shouldn't need Google Play services to run. And while Angry Birds here didn't work at all, because it's just broken, Jet Car Stunts didn't work here because the game uses gyro controls for steering. And I tried everything I could think of and I looked around in all the settings here, but for the life of me, I could not find a way to make the game think that I was tilting the device. So I would suspect that any games that use motion control for their control scheme are gonna be a no-go. Kinda crazy that we have all of this motion control sensors and gyro sensors and everything in these controllers, yet Mark Facebook himself could not be bothered to implement any of them in a way that could play regular Android games, despite every other Android device pretty much ever having the hardware and the support for motion controls in games. Just wanna like shake his stupid little reptilian neck. Or maybe it is actually doable and really simple and I'm just a stupid asshole. Could be either. Piano Tiles worked pretty well though. And after that, I went to go try Piano Tiles VR, which is a thing. And then it told me that I needed to set up hand tracking, which I had no idea about at the time. So I got all that set up. And then I just kind of had to stop for a second because my mind was Alone? I had no idea you could do this. What's even cooler is that it actually works pretty well. I mean, at least it seemed to when I was playing Piano Tiles VR specifically. Also, I'm sure this game has the proper licenses from Disney to use these Stormtrooper and Yoda models. This game is pretty janky and unresponsive, and eventually I just adopted the strategy that the Stormtroopers were demonstrating, and then after doing that, the game was much easier. Also, at some point, my VR space station house thing disappeared, so now I'm kind of just like floating in space? I'm in space. Anyway, after the riveting experience that was Piano Tiles VR, I wondered if there were any other Android titles that had like a proper VR counterpart. And that had caused me to stumble upon Angry Birds VR. This is way more polished since it's an officially licensed game. And to be honest, this is a really decent take on Angry Birds in like a 3D space. I had a lot of fun launching these dudes around. This guy doesn't get a chance though. Screw this guy. Please, no! There's some other games I found for the Quest 2 that will take traditionally PC games and then kind of just shoehorn in VR support like Questcraft. I was instantly amazed when I got into the menu here and saw just how huge the scale of a Minecraft block really is. You just don't realize until they're right in front of your face like this. In Questcraft, as far as I can tell, it's not only a port of Minecraft to the Quest 2, but also just a port of Minecraft Java in general to Android, which is crazy. This isn't like a modified version of the typical Android Bedrock Edition. This is the full latest version of Minecraft Java for PC. Sure. Minecraft Java. Welcome. You can chop down trees with your fist, make a crafting table, fall into an underground pool of water without knowing how to swim, you know, as you do. The list goes on and on. It runs horrible, which you would expect from running the full PC version of the game here. But the fact that it's here at all is really cool. It's a shame that Microsoft never gave Bedrock Pocket Edition official VR support because if this was more polished, I feel like it would be really fun. Lambda 1 VR is a mod along the same lines as Questcraft, but with Half-Life 1. This runs significantly better than Questcraft, which I would hope from a game from 1998. This was really cool to play. I was inside of the cutscene that I've seen a hundred times. I was actually a passenger on the train that takes you to Black Mesa. I just thought that was really cool. But then I saw this ugly motherfucker. Yeah, for some reason the HD models are enabled in this port, so that's gross. Oh, that's real nice. Anyway, I got into the Black Mesa building, got my HEV suit, and then really I only made it down the elevator before I started feeling like I was gonna blow chunks. So just to be safe, I called it quits. It's a great experience, don't get me wrong. It's totally worth trying. I just don't really have the stomach for games that have you smoothly walking most of the time. And don't even get me started on characters jumping in VR. Ooh. There's also Half-Life 2 VR mods out there, but those don't run natively on the Quest 2 like this does. You'd have to use Quest Link for that. 
And speaking of Quest Link, the Quest 2 obviously is a purpose-built standalone VR headset, but that doesn't stop it from working like a tethered one too. And what's even better is that you're not tethered at all. At least that's the theory. So there's a feature on this thing called Air Link that lets you play your PC, Oculus Rift, and Steam VR games like if you had a Valve Index or Vive or a Rift. Now, I know what you're thinking. You can hardly get TV shows to stream reliably over your Wi-Fi. Streaming VR must be an awful time with how sensitive people are to frame drops and lag and all that. Yeah, no, I'm just gonna get motion sickness if I try that. But as it turns out, that might be what you get. Yeah, it's uh, not great. Here, my girlfriend and I are both playing the Diner Duo. It's a pretty cool asymmetric VR game where one of you is manning the grill and making orders, and the other one is taking and serving the orders. I used Oculus Air Link to play this, since it's a Steam VR game, and you can see on the capture here that my VR gameplay actually looks really smooth, but in reality, it was not great. Here, it only managed to capture what Steam VR was sending to the Quest, not what I was receiving. And trust me, what I was receiving is far worse than what you see here. If I had to describe it, I'd say that 75% of the time, it was fine. But then it would freeze for like a whole second or drop the FPS down to like 10, and then I'd suddenly get very, very aware of my stomach. But luckily, you also do get the option of connecting a Type-C cable and sending the video feed that way. I'd even call it a yeah, okay experience, really. And you know what? Quality aside, I'm just really glad I actually got to boot up Half-Life Alex again after over a year and a half without being able to have a way to play it. But initially, it was pretty rocky. Things were stuttering and lagging, and I had to go change some settings, and after that, it smoothed out. When OBS is recording, it needs me to bump things down a notch in order to keep the frame rate consistent. Well, is it better than the Vive? Uh, no, not really. The screen on here is a little nicer. I remember the screen door effect being much more of an issue on the Vive than it is here on the Quest 2. Despite being directly connected to the PC, there's a really noticeable amount of latency and video compression, and the tracking felt like it had absolutely no idea what was going on sometimes. It was pretty noticeable every time I had to reach behind myself to grab ammo, and it could get screwy enough to actually give me trouble throwing these grenades around, and I ended up blowing myself up. Twice. But I'll give this thing the benefit of the doubt. I'll try something a little lighter. Among Us VR is... Get the flip out of here. I witnessed that. Something. I have never felt like I did not belong somewhere more than I did while inside of this game. He was trying to skip out. <laughs> anyway, it seems like it ran a lot better than Half-Life Alex did, but at the same time, you're doing a lot less precise movement in Among Us compared to Half-Life Alex, so kind of up in the air how I feel about Quest Link. It just seems like it should be a lot better. I mean, I'm directly connected to my PC. Why shouldn't it work as good as a Rift S, you know? I've also had some friends tell me that it works no problem for them, so... It's just kind of one of those things that might work differently for everybody, I guess. So if it works great for you, then... Great. But for me, it was finicky at best and pretty broken at the worst. Hey guys, if you vote me, you guys are racist because I'm black. Oh. One thing that Android does best is running emulators. I picked newer consoles to emulate this time around compared to my other videos, because we all know that this thing is going to be able to run NES, Genesis, GBA, Atari, all that light stuff. It's not going to be a problem here. So I decided to start off my emulation adventure with the DS and Drastic. This is a paid app that emulates the Nintendo DS, and it's easily the best performing DS emulator for Android. I bought it years ago on Google Play, and obviously the Quest 2 doesn't have Google Play services, so I had to sideload the APK manually manually like everything else on here. Either way though, it absolutely refused to open up anything in my internal storage, and no amount of messing with the permissions or reinstalling the app or force close and clearing the data, nothing would get this thing to work. So unfortunately, I have no idea how DS runs on here. This dude right here got it to work on the Quest 1, and it looks pretty good for him, so I assume it would run fine on the Quest 2. But how about some good news? PlayStation 1 games run great on the Quest 2. It's got enough power to handle PS1, no problem. No slowdowns or horrible frame times, it's just, it's just great. 
Dreamcast via Raycast runs really well here. This is my first experience with Dreamcast emulation actually, and I'd say that the Quest 2 is handling it just fine. It's pretty cool to be able to play on such a relatively big screen in my field of vision, and everything looks really sharp, it's great. GameCube is pretty much more of the same. From what I could tell, there's no slowdowns and everything seems to be working all right. I wish I had more to say about the PS1, the Dreamcast, and the GameCube, but to be honest, when it comes to emulation, the less I have to say, the better. After a while, you forget you're playing games in an emulator and you just, you just play the games. That's how it should be. Anyway, the good news is now over. <laughs> Wii is up next and it's running? Not at 100% speed, I can tell you that. I played around with the settings to see if I could get any more performance out of it, and I even tried a fork of Dolphin called MMJR, which is supposed to run better, but like the DS, I couldn't get this working either. Wii emulation seems like it might be just a bit past what the Quest 2 is comfortable with running, in my experience at least. But if you can make it run well on yours, then you get a Bringus Studios seal of a good job, gamer. <laughs> N64 is super perfectly not bad. I don't know. I guess it's good. Goldeneye chugged a little bit, but Mario 64 was spot on. Also, on the subject of Mario 64, there is a source port of Mario 64 to the Quest 2 that lets you look around and see everything in first person from Mario's point of view, which is pretty cool. And that leads me into the Sony PSP, which is easily the best emulator here. And the reason I say that is because it does this. You can look around in the game world of the game that you're emulating. Dude, I don't know what kind of unholy black magic fury the PPSSPP VR devs had to summon to get this thing working, but it is crazy to experience. It's so cool. I love this so much that I went back to add more PSP ISOs to my Quest 2. I just want to see what other stuff I can look at in some of my favorite games. This game right here is Mercury, a physics-based puzzle platformer, and you are definitely not supposed to be able to look behind yourself like this, but f it, we're playing on the Quest 2, so I don't care. I'm gonna do it anyway! You know what? Screw the rules. There are no rules! I'm gonna boot up Tony Hawk's Underground 2 Remix, start a new game, look exactly this far to the left during this cutscene, and then stare at this van right here that I bet nobody else has ever seen in their entire life because... How could they? I'm not first at much in life, but between finishing and seeing this van, I come first, baby! I tried to think of some of the best games to try this out on, and of course that meant trying Wipeout Pure. This was awesome. Being able to see the scale and the size of the ships and the track and everything. Now that I'm going back and watching this recording, I realize it pretty much looks like any other gameplay of Wipeout. It just doesn't do it justice. But if you have a Quest 2, you have to see this for yourself. This game has such a beautiful world and there's so much to look at while you're racing. It's, it's, it's just awesome. The final PSP game that I tried was Star Wars Battlefront 2 because I thought, I don't know, it'd be neat, but actually it was just vomit inducing for whatever reason. So I didn't really spend much time in here after all. But anyway, PSP emulation on the Quest 2 is sick. If I was she says, I'd be watching my back. This thing's gonna put him out of business. Anyway, taking a sidestep from gaming, what good would this thing be if you can't watch Bringus Studios videos on it? YouTube and web browsing as a whole really works pretty good. And the built-in browser can detect when you're full screening a video and it'll change itself to theater mode and you just get this massive screen to watch your videos on. Me personally, my eyes and face are way too sensitive to consume any content like this for a long period of time. But if you can do it, then uh, I hate you. But if you can do it, then you should try it. It's really nice. You know, it's kind of like headphones for your eyes now that I'm thinking about it. The browser is also featured enough to let you download some APKs directly from it and then install them, which is nice. Between the homebrew and the emulators and PC link, the Quest 2 is pretty cool. I like it. The whole process of modding it is also really fun. If you like soft modding consoles like the Wii or the 3DS or the PSP, there isn't like as much hackery, I guess, involved in this. You make like a Facebook developer account and stuff. It's kind of weird, uh, but the process, I guess, is kind of similar. I hope you enjoy. Nope, no outro yet. Hold on, we're not done. That's it for the Quest 2, but hold on. Do not click off this video yet. Hold on. There was a giveaway that I ran in my last video and we're picking the winner right now. And the winner of the 799 Lenovo is Jack Neely 7772 over on YouTube. All right, Jack, here's how you claim your prize. 
I've got a link to my Discord server down in the description. You need to go ahead and join the Discord, find me on there, and then go ahead and send me a DM, and we can hash out all the details so I can get that thing to you. And for everyone else, if something comes up and it doesn't work out and we have to pick someone else, go ahead and make sure you look at my community posts page on my channel. Once I've either confirmed with Jack that he's going to be able to receive it, or I have to go and pick someone else, I'm going to make a community post about it so you guys can get some closure, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, congratulations, Jack Neely. The 799 Lenovo is yours. You just got to message me to get it. And anyone else that's interested, that Discord is open for anyone to join. That's my official Bringy Studios Discord. So you're welcome to talk with other people that like modding, hacking, stuff like that. You're welcome to post your memes, post pictures of your cat. We got something for everybody. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for coming along on the ride. I will see you in the next one.